Great. Welcome. Welcome to all of you watching us on Facebook Live. We're here at St. Stephen's in Harrington. Now I'm trying to figure out what church I'm at now. Holy Week is right too. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise. That among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Reading is from Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of, the, of Israel and the house of Judea. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put the law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 51. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever Against you only have I sinned. And done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. And upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. And you will make me understand this. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness. Hide your face from my sins. And blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The epistle, Hebrews 5, 5 through 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but 
was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you, as he says also to another, in another place. You are the priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he had heard, and he was heard, excuse me, because of his reverent submission, although he was a son. He learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been not perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation. For, who, for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel by Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. For those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Good morning again. Good morning. As I was getting ready this morning to come in to do these churches, <laughs> I was putting on my shoes. These black shoes, I, you know these black shoes I got on my. I only wear them once a week. Guess which day it is. <laughs> You know how old these shoes are? I think dirt's old. <laughs> I've had these shoes for a long time. I was thinking about this one on top of to Jamie before I left. I've had these shoes at least for 20 years, if not longer. I've actually took them to a cobbler. Who knows what a cobbler is? There's a few out there, see? I know some of you younger folk don't know what cobblers are, but I took them and had them resold. I'm not going to buy new shoes. And it's funny because when I, 
I look at pictures of my, my oldest granddaughter, she's sort of 17, she's going to be 18 years old this year. And my youngest grandchild is eight years old. And I got three of them, they're all there. But I've got pictures of me with my oldest grandchild in shirts and jeans, the same ones with my youngest grandchild. I mean, I just, I had a shirt, and if Jane ever comes, I don't know, if Jane, <laughs> that was in the closet, and I loved this shirt, it was great, it was a flannel shirt, it was green, it, it, so the collar was all gone, basically frayed, and then when I went like this, the elbow came completely out, and it was so, but I wanted to keep the shirt, because why? I'm comfortable in the shirt. It's gone. <laughs> I think sometimes we all get comfortable with certain things, don't we? We get comfortable. I think clothing, being comfortable on clothing, that's a metaphor for how we're comfortable within our lives. We get to a point where we just get comfortable. And that's a product of the systems upon which we live in. The system out there the systems within the churches, the systems within our workplaces. We come to learn them and we come to understand them. Our families have systems. In fact, there's a whole, a whole school of psychotherapy based upon family systems theory, which basically states we, we get comfortable, we get used to certain way things are. You can do a family, what you call a family genogram. And a genogram isn't like something like Ancestry.com. It's deeper than that. You go through and you mark out the things and places where there's been cut off in the family, where you know you don't see Uncle Joe or Aunt Susie anymore because, well, they, they cut themselves off in the family. Why did they do that? But then you start to see, well, geez. Not only did Uncle George, George, not Susie, do that, we see we're here also in the family, and here also in the family. And we start to see out, people who are alcoholics. We see it one generation, and it skips a generation, and it shows up again. And then it shows up again. That's the way systems work. We don't truly let go of certain things. They carry on from generation to generation to generation. And it's only when somebody in the present generation decides that this cannot carry on. Because to continue on this path, we are not going to get anywhere. And that's what makes us uncomfortable. Because even though we know we know in our minds, we know that this is wrong, that something has to change. We get uncomfortable when we have to face that change. And this past year of pandemic, this past year of all of the things that we've seen going on in politics, in the society, these are changes which make us feel uncomfortable. And this past week, when those women down in Georgia were brutally murdered, is part of a system which is wrong and needs to be changed. And it's incumbent upon us as Christians to be the catalyst for that kind of change. Because we know what God has called us into. We know what Jesus Christ wants from each and every one of us. In today's gospel, Jesus confronts, confronts the powers and principalities. Jesus is going to be a catalyst and is a catalyst for change. That's why he's crucified. Did Jesus do anything wrong? To be crucified? Did he murder anybody? Did he lead a revolt, an armed revolt? No. He wasn't even implicated in any plot to, to do, do, get rid of the emperor. 
Never. All he preached was a gospel of love, a gospel in which all people could be can reach out to God and not be afraid. And power doesn't like that. Power is to be the desire people to be afraid. Because the more we are afraid, the more we are manipulated. And the more we are manipulated, the more we become afraid. And it keeps getting on, it continues on, it continues on. Change is hard. And now we are faced once again in the throes of change. The change within the church. The change within this community. The change that is coming to this diocese. To the church in general. These are changes that will make us feel uncomfortable. But yet they are vital changes that we need to embrace if we are truly to be the church of God. If we are truly called to be those, those people who are unafraid of change. Last night, I started watching this thing on Showtime. <laughs> City on a Hill. You heard? Oh. Well, I, I kind of, my Janie will understand this. I kind of like it because it's about Boston. It's, it's, it's Produced and uh, done by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, favorite sons of Boston. But it's about Boston back in the 80s and 90s. And if you were from that area in the 80s and 90s, it wasn't a very happy place. The cops were on the take. And they weren't great. They were all mainly Irish police. Well, Irish American. The church, the Roman Catholic Church, the church, was having their issues. It was all found out by the Boston Globe years later what happened, the abuses of the church. But they were all mixed and matched together. The church, the police, the government. All of this conspired in a system where people just got comfortable. Your normal Bostonian on the street knew where their place was. The black person living in Roxbury knew where they were. The white person living in Dorchester on the South Beach knew their place. They all knew their place. And then suddenly, change happened. And it's change that is continuing today, not just in the city of Boston, but all over the country, where we are beginning to recognize that certain things are harmful to ourselves and to our country and to our fellow human beings. What happened in Atlanta was a born. It says a lot about who, I mean, he had a bad day, give me a break. I'll give him a bad day. That was part of a system which denigrates women, denigrates Asian Americans, and sees them as less than and that is a born. We as Christians are called to stand against these kind of things. These issues within the system. It doesn't mean we can change the system right now. But it does mean we can change who we are. By doing what we can do right now within ourselves to make those kinds of changes. They're difficult. I have a hard time changing. Look, I couldn't get rid of a shark. <laughs> and it's taken me years to change some of the ways I used to think about the way I believe church ought to be. 
who was invited, who was not invited. It took me 17 years at Trinity Parish to change the culture of a parish where certain people of a certain stripe were not welcome. Gays and lesbians. They weren't welcome when I first arrived there, but yet they are. The warden now. The current <laughs> rector. All these things do change. The ship, like any other organization, is like a big, big, big ship with a little tiny rudder. Turn the Titanic on a little tiny rudder. You can't. It takes a long time to make changes, and it begins with each and every one of us to open up our house to open up our minds, to be unafraid, to say what we see is wrong, and to challenge that. Even in our general conversation with friends and family, general conversation with people we know, and they make those kinds of jokes. And we have to say, you know, that's really not the way to go, is it? George, he, Gail, Sarah. And sometimes it comes from acknowledging our own, our own part in this whole thing. It's hard, it's not easy. But think of Jesus, it wasn't easy for him. But he stood up against the world, as he calls it, the system of its time, against the Romans, against the religious authorities, against all that he knew was wrong. That's why he stashed all the stuff in the temple, because it was wrong. It was wrong and went against what God desires for each and every one of us. Peace, love, being a people who are unafraid and willing to stand up against those who would do us damage. Now stand, say it again, the Nicene Creed.
prayers of the people are form six. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For the community, the nation, and the world, we pray for those in the military, Christopher Dawson, Dustin Gary, Shimmy Grimes, Justin R. Hudson, Russell Knob, Amber Mulberry, Jared Farmer, and Bruce Carroll. All the work for justice for your communities, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, we pray for the following, those who are sick or with other issues, John Macy, Bill Shaw, Shirley Bowden, Emma Fisher, Diana Matlock, Alfreda Clinton, Joe Klobowski, Gabby Bates, Bernie Polker, Kelsey Malloy, Bruce Clinton, Ava Marie Van Berlin, Regina Miller, Lexi Miles, Paula Swift, Dave Scott, and Jan Graves. For long term and restored health, Dale Matlock and Barbara Mogul. For good health in older years, Gretchen Fogus, Molly Revels, Mary Mills, and Joan Nava. For those who minister to the sick, the thankless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For the most reverend Michael B. Curry, our presiding bishop. And for the reverend Kevin S. Brown, our diocesan bishop. For Bruce Wilmus, our priest. Alex Emmer, senior warden. Vestry group, Patricia. Patricia, Viva, Connie, Rock, and the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, and the Christian Council, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and the Church. The special needs and concerns of this con congregation. Pray for those victims of violence in our nation and in this world. Hear us, Lord. For your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this life. I ask your thanksgivings for the birthday of Jimmy Swigert, my two daughter-in-laws, Allison and Tiffany, the anniversary of Bob and Melissa Kinlan, the confirmation of Kendrick Gallipo and Molly Revels. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died. Kim Wayne, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your love and kindness be upon them. To put their trust in you. Let us pray now for the forgiveness of our sins. All together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that they may live and serve you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
describe the Lord, the honor of his name, bring offerings and come into his court. Great Thanksgiving and Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to do good and joyful things always and everywhere. And give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts. The prayer of joy for the pastoral feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacrament, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing to sin to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, both sand and the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, both sand and the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Hey, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the morning of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has caused me of old to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in 
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be priests. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on whom you have by faith. Body of Christ, the bread.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you. Remain with you all.